see Duncan! You're yelling again. Wow. So, why are you yelling all the time? I'm just saying thank you every way that I know how. And because the theme is all about gratitude, that's why I'm doing it. Maybe if you spent more time paying attention and less time making up words like mahalo, you'd know that. Right. How silly of me. Remind me of the theme. We're talking about how gratitude is letting others know you see how they have helped you. Ah, how you got because I'm on us. There you go, just making up words again. But I guess, no matter what language you say it in, saying thank you rocks. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Rock, paper, and then okay. scissors. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So two times. 
Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah! I hope I win every single time. Ew. Is it hot? No, it just kind of tastes gross. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. scissors. No! Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm alright. Rock, paper, paper, scissors. scissors. No! Yes! Ooh. What's that one? Ooh. Ooh. It's hot? Ooh. I really hope I don't have to do that. I'm sweating. Rock, paper, scissors. Yes! No! Yes! 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 No! Woo! Oh. Alright, you're gonna have to let us have Ooh. a chance to let our mouths cool down. Hey. Or the Bible story. So everybody, <laughs> we're going to take a quick dance break. Sometimes it feels like the burn will never go away. We huff and we puff, drink water and run for ice cream, and a lot of the time it doesn't help. But when it does, we are very grateful for the relief from our suffering. What a perfect analogy to lead us into our Bible story for this week. And it comes from the book of Luke. One day, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem traveling along the border between two provinces called Samaria and Galilee. As Jesus neared a village, he was approached by ten men who had a skin disease. Because there weren't any doctors, vaccines, or medicine back then, it wasn't good enough for these guys to just socially distance. Physically distance. Well, all of them. It wasn't <laughs> good enough. They couldn't even just stay home. They were so sick that they had to be moved outside the city and they weren't allowed to come back in. They had to live outside all on their own. Wow, I should uh, 
really send a thank you note to my doctor. Jesus saw the men coming. Before they even got to Jesus, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. Wait, hold up. I thought these guys weren't allowed to go back into the town. Correct. And to go see the priests, you weren't allowed to have any diseases. You had to go and show the priest that you had been healed, and then the priest would confirm that you actually had been healed, just to make sure that you weren't, like, pulling anything. But the men still had the disease. Also correct. But they had heard that Jesus had worked miracles, and because they also wanted to be healed, they did exactly as he said. Aren't they going to get in trouble? Oh, absolutely. You can't just go into town when you're sick. Then why would they do that? Well, on the way into town, they were healed. By the time they got to the priest, he was able to see them and confirm that they had indeed been healed. That's awesome! But the story doesn't end there. One of the ten men went back to thank Jesus. And not just a polite little, thanks bro. He threw himself face down at Jesus' feet and praised God. This guy gets it! He got his life back and he thanked the one who did it for him. The craziest part is, the one guy who went back was a Samaritan. And Samaritans, and Jews like Jesus, were usually enemies and would never talk to each other. So that makes him an even better example. He puts his feelings and pride aside and said thank you. And that's our bottom line. Say thank you. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry, not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the source were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen him in years. Oh, my little boys, all grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' life seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. I hear it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road, walking stick in hand. The other lepers straggled after them. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leper's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. Master Jesus, Jesus over have pity on, on us. The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the lepers dared to limp closer. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. As the lepers neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go, show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. 
His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on, and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well, that happened. I don't get it. Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, the lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. <clears throat> the stick went flying, and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look, my skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better, woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest! Race you! The leopard splashed across the creek, hurtling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge, and the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. Turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus? Jesus! The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well! Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled but his eyes searched the row behind him. Weren't all 10 healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priests. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on a second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living.
still can't believe only one guy out of 10 guys went back to say thank you. And I want to be more like that guy. We can all say thank you to the people who are around us, to our families, to our friends, our teachers, our teammates, anyone who, can do, who does something for us, we can say thank you to. Take some time to slow down this week so that you don't forget to say thank you to the people who have helped you. Pay attention to the things that people are doing for you and take a second to thank them. Remember, it feels good to have others thank you for the things you've done, so treat others the way you would want to be treated. We also hope that you take some time to stop and think about all of the things that you are thankful for. Tarzan, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful that even though we're going through some crazy times, we live in a country where even if I get sick, there are wonderful doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers who will take care of me. What about you, Smalls? I think I am most thankful for the fact that I will know that I will always have food on my table. I know that there are a lot of grown-ups and kids out there who are hungry and they don't have food that they can get when they get hungry. And of course we are thankful for all of you. And not because you watch our videos or because we love hanging out with you, which we do, but we're just thankful that you are you. That will be perfect practice for next week where we're talking about changing our attitudes and talking about more food and how we can help out with other people. Namaste. <laughs>